the students will recall what we described in the first part of our presentation on exercise performance and the art environment. To refresh your ideas, I will just summarize what we spoke in the earlier lecture that what are the important variables by which heat can be assessed and what are the human behavioral factors that also can be linked to the environmental variables in order to describe the exposure and these combined factors of physical environment and behavioral responses combined together makes it what you call the effective heat load. Once the defective heat load is formed, there are various physiological mechanisms by which human body responds to it. Either heat gets accumulated or heat gets dissipated. So, in this process, if somebody is involved in various kinds of exhaustive physical activity like in sports and etc., then there is always a possibility that human body reaches to the limit of exposure. In this part of the presentation, we will elaborate on how that human body respond in case of different sports activities very specific like soccer, hockey and other activities. So, in case of sports like soccer, hockey, you require to involve in high intensity uh, activity. Naturally, you have to do high metabolic load plus you have got amount of heat from the environmental source. So, the total heat storage will obviously increase you know that depending upon that uh, heat storage the body temperature responses are elicited. Your body temperature means muscle temperature and the other temperature, the skin temperature all can rise and which can ultimately lead to fatigue. Fatigue through altering the capacity of our neuromuscular system. So, once the neuromuscular system is fatigued, then there is a likelihood that the contractile behavior of the motor units, recruitment phenomena, everything are likely to be affected in the process of exposure to high heat. In case of sports, the intervention can be given in the form of cooling of the body. That means, somebody can cool the body by external means in order to lower the skin temperature, muscle temperature or coat temperature and that will allow the person to endure long time the exposure and that can be applicable for high intensity continuous as well as also in intermittent performance. So, there are some advantages of being discussed by various researchers about the ergogenic benefits of pre-cooling uh, in case of uh, prolonged exposure. So, the evidences are in favor that uh, both in the pre-event level and the post-event level cooling is an important ergogenic aid in the protection and recovery of uh, exercise induced heat loss. Some big football teams in the world adopt uh, this kind of pre-cooling techniques. So, there are some advantages has already been recorded by various researchers. In case of a prolonged physical activity like uh, marathon running in hot environment, you must have noticed that often people drop because they are unable to continue their marathon run for a long period of time because of the exertion heat and fatigue and there is always a likelihood of hypothermia. So, body or brain temperature are responsible for failure in maintaining the skeletal muscle activation at the required level and naturally in case of marathon running it is a constant problem that the aspects of heat exposure is taken into account. So, in case of heat acclimatization, there are two aspects that there is a repeated exposure of heat requires for a certain period of time that will allow the human defense mechanism to go a progressive change. You must come across two terminology, one is called acclimatization and another is called acclimation. Acclimatization is commonly being used. This is induced 
by repeated exposure to natural hot environment, natural activity. But there can be, as I said, in case of sports event or in case of other physical exercises, one can undergo systematic acclimatization process in an experimental condition for achieving some amount of adaptation of the physiological system and that is called acclimation. So, please I hope that you understand the difference between acclimatization and acclimation. During the process of heat acclimatization again there are three aspects of it. One is adjustment which is a short term. Acclimatization is always in long term change, months may take place. An adaptation that changes are non reversible means you know, the terminology itself says that acclimatization if you are withdrawn from that environment then you can lose acclimatization. With the heat acclimatization what happens? Human being demonstrates an increased ability to perform physical activity, reduce the cardiovascular stress and respond to acute heat stress with a pronounced pseudomotor response. There is a significant amount of role about the, the skin in the process of heat acclimatization because a very large area get acclimatized by the adjustment with the internal body then different body areas will have different response for adjustment. Heat acclimatization however, depends on variety of conditions. Number one is the degree of exposure in a particular environment. What is the physical environment? What is the level of temperature, humidity, air velocity and other conditions? One side. The second one is the what is the type of physical activity performed? Is he doing light work or is he sitting idle? Is he doing some physical exercise or he is involved in long term intermittent or long term physical activity? The, this is the type of physical exercise performed by the individual are essential conditions that will determine how the human being gets acclimatized. And each one of us because we live in the same environment or similar environment, we always have some kind of an acclimatization. So, the state of acclimatization of a person is also an indicative factor of arriving at the suitable level of acclimatization. Regular training at work to work in hot is also one way of achieving some kind of acclimatization. That is why it says that acclimatization is better maintained by individuals who are physically fit. So, after acclimation we can see there is an increase in cardiac output, stroke volume, there is a splenic or renal blood flow increase after acclimatization, the even it, the threshold of vasodilation also reduces. So, what are the benefits? The principal benefits are that there is an increased sweating efficiency, increased sensitivity of the sweat glands and the lower threshold for onset of sweating with acclimation possibly heat acclimation shifts the thermoneutral zone and set point of body temperature regulation which we will discuss at some other point. Precisely when we talk about acclimatization and several of those responses that we have discussed earlier, heat acclimatization is an I would say unsurpassed example of enormous physiological potential or psychological potential to combat environmental adversities. But we have to admit, agree, affirm that complete acclimatization of a person is rarely possible. I repeat again that caution is needed that acclimatization may be specific to the level of heat exposure, whether it is hot dry or hot humid to which a person is exposed and may not respond well above the level of exposure. So, the criteria of acclimatization to a specific environment is important where the person will be exposed subsequently. So, if he has to expose at a certain level then acclimatization also must be taken up at that level.
if it is too low a level or too high a level then that exposure condition may not suit for acclimatization purpose. Importantly it is also to recognize that uh, the training to work in heat cannot be taken as an adequate substitute for heat acclimatization because there are individual differences in terms of physical abilities also in terms of regularity of training and exposure. So, the degree of exposure to the combined load of work and heat potentially reflect differentially on the cardiorespiratory and thermoregulatory capacities and this requires to be understood by the student when somebody is thinking about undergoing some kind of heat acclimatization for sports event. I will now talk about the approaches that can be taken up for fluid intake in the hot environment. When there is a profuse sweating, the body loses water. So, there is a common saying that body dehydration takes place. Normal circumstances when the body maintains certain amount of water level or fluid level in the body, that situation we call it the euhydration means it is a normal step. If it is less than the normal state, we call it the dehydrated state. On the other end, if it is more than normal, you are excessively taking some amount of water or fluid, then the body can also be arrived at a level called hyperhydration. So, the dehydration is a lower end, hyperhydration is the upper end, and at the center, we have got the U hydration level. So, if there is an increased dehydration, then naturally you will understand the body hemostasis will be disturbed if there is no adequate replenishment of the fluid. I will discuss afterwards about the method by which that fluid replenishment can take place. But when there is a inadequate replenishment, then there is a possibility of blood flowing to the skin will be decreased. If blood flowing to the skin is decreased, then that will lead to elevated coat temperature, decrease the sweat rate, decrease exercise tolerance and ultimately leading the person to increase risk of heat injury. So, fluid intake is an essential condition that is required to be considered when a person is exposed to hot environment. We all know that the one does not voluntarily replace all the water lost during prolonged work or prolonged heat stress, because the requirement of water and the thirst are two different mechanisms. When we choose fluids sometimes we call the water, sometimes we call the electrolyte, some might talk about carbohydrate and also in the recently people started talking about the glycerol supplements. We will come to this point again. Which, what it does? It only as I said U addition level gets modified. So, you take some amount of fluid in the body and that helps you to assist your thermoregulation and excess performance. When a fluid supplement is chosen, if we are sufficiently rehydrated, then we can promote a state of hyperhydration. That chosen fluid after ingestion are evenly distributed in the body space and probably retains in the body space for relatively longer period of time and accordingly better preserve the cardiovascular and thermoregulatory function. In this case that is why I try to emphasize here that there is a possibility that osmotically active solutes can be taken inside, so that it remains in the body for relatively longer period of time. So, choosing of the fluid is an important objective for us to prevent ourselves from dehydration.
when the stress level is very very high i have already said several times in the beginning that ultimately the heat stress can go very high and then lead to injury or heat disorders heat illnesses for that purpose i have made a schematic presentation here for the students to clearly understand that how it happens i'll move on the cursor you can see that when the level is high the skin temperature rises when the skin temperature rises the receptors on the skin surface are also gets activated so this is your first line of defense means there is an augmentation of skin circulation sometimes we call it the vasodilatation otherwise it will have a loss through convection and conduction which is a natural process if along with the skin vasodilation as i said the second line of defense if it is not adequate then there is a second line of defense is the sweating as i have already explained to you several in different way sweating means there is an increased heat loss by evaporation as well as also dripping of water dripping panting all these mechanism by which the sweat gets eliminated from the body and also simultaneously amount of heat gets uh, eliminated so if that sweating continues then there is also loss of water and also salt from the body if only water gets drained out from the body i have mentioned that dehydration takes place if salt also gets drained out then that we get different kinds of cramps muscle cramps takes place if a excessive sweating takes place then you get a sensation of prickly heat so there can be fatiguing of the muscle sweat glands there is a diminished sweating and then there is a rise in body temperature the fatigue and impairment of the performance and then damage to the central control mechanisms and finally a rapid rise in body temperature which is the final state often we see as a heat stroke which is sometimes very fatal this is a photograph from one of the olympic events when the person fall down and he is in heat stroke situation so there are three conditions that by which heat stress or heat disorder can take place dehydration or lack of acclimatization number 1 second one that we do not understand the danger of heat or third one is that there is an accidental or unforeseeable circumstance that lead to sudden high heat exposure in the subsequent slides i have individually mentioned about uh, each category of the uh, disease or disorder what are the predisposing factors what are these uh, physiological disturbances what is the likely treatment and also how it can be prevented for the students to follow them i have uh, briefly mentioned that each of those uh, category of disorder has certain features which can be carefully examined and see what kind of treatment can be given and also what prevention can take place for example in case of heat stroke the ultimate situation as i have shown you in our, my earlier slide that there is a sudden rise in body temperature and that body temperature may even exceed 40 degree centigrade body can reach to a critical maximum when the critical maximum reaches then there is a likelihood of denaturation of protein in the body and that can be disastrous for a human being so heat stroke situation should be avoided as far as possible by certain interventions so what are the treatment if you look at this uh, fourth column that there repeat cooling i have a photograph here i'll show you later that there is a one can put this person immersed in the in the chilled water or wrap up the whole body with a wet sheet there is a continuously vigorous fanning so that uh, uh, the cooling can takes place normally a person who is acclimatized 
he can be avoided from this kind of heat stroke situation. Our own experience is about 5 to 7 days of combined exposure is an adequate uh, means for a person to be acclimatized. Heat sink up is another situation where uh, means uh, because of the circulatory hypostasis then there is a likelihood that there can be fainting while standing in the heat it is primarily because the acclimatization is poor so the pooling of blood vessels takes place in the in the region and uh, primary prevention is acclimatization and uh, uh, one can allow the person to go for intermittent uh, activity that can avoid this kind of situation. There are two basic uh, uh, categories of diseases one is called uh, the water and salt depletion which often we call as the heat exertion and another one is the heat salt water and salt depletion as a heat cramp. There are two basic differences in it that in both cases you will see the fatigue, but however in case of exertions you will see that the skin becomes moist and uh, fainting takes place, there is a rapid heart rate, and the blood pressure drops, body temperature may rise up to about 38.5 degree, the urine gets concentrated. So, basically the person gets exhausted to heat exposure. Remove him from the place of work, ask him to lie down, take some rest, administer some fluid through mouth and keep at rest until the urine volume indicates that water balance is restored. Here also if there is a acclimatization well, about 5 to 7 days this kind of situation can be avoided and also allow frequent drinking during any kind of sports event. In case of heat cramps that is basically depletion of salts. So, there can be spasm of muscles during work, there can be heavy sweating during hot work. So, salted liquids can be given as a treatment and uh, in extreme situation there can be infusion can also be preferred. So, prevention is the adequate salt intake for particularly for uh, unacclimatized person. It is also to be remembered that the people in the tropics uh, sometimes uh, take uh, already take large quantity of uh, salt. So, one should be very careful about the, their food habits when uh, giving salted liquids by mouth. Then there are some kind of skin eruption also takes place is another disease form which uh, sometimes we call the heat rash or prickly heat. That means you must have seen that there is a blistering like uh, uh, red vesicles uh, come out on the skin surface and there is a continuous pricking sensation. So, the, the treatment is you know that uh, it is only because the, the sweat glands gets plugged up. So, there is a inflammatory reaction takes place. So, it is cleaning of the skin and putting some dry lotions then uh, ask him to take some rest and that can recover the skin eruption situation. These are reversible phenomena. Then uh, this is a typical uh, picture that I am showing here that uh, the right hand side picture you can see the prickly sensation the, the vesicles like situations you can see also around the nipples. So, these are extreme situations that one can observe. Eruptions can be seen on the face, on the back and uh, some parts of the trunk. There is a situation when uh, then uh, we call the anhydrotic situation. Anhydrotic means that uh, the some area of the body there is a stoppage of sweating very extensive area of the skin will find that uh, there is no sweating taking place after the heat exposure. And this is not a very normal circumstances. So, if you find somebody is uh, sweating is, uh, uh, is stopped, so the when there is a likelihood of incomplete incapacitation or sometimes you call the skin trauma, heat rash, sunburn. So, those are the situations when uh, uh, the sweat remains deep in the skin and uh, you, no evaporative cooling takes place and that cause heat intolerance. It is very important that we see that uh, people do not go to this anhydrotic situation of their, their skin. So, in order to recover them quickly 
the best way is also remove them from that exposure uh, and gradually allow him to rest in a cooler climate and this kind of situation are many times reported by in various heat wave situations in many parts of the world. So, these are some uh, disease condition that requires substantial amount of prevention. These are important because you know the our environment temperature is rising, we are saying that the climate change is taking place. So, often we encounter different kinds of heat waves in different parts of the region. However, you know any high temperature above the normal remains for 4 to 5 days in a particular region can be described as a heat wave zone. Thousands of people die every year in, in this country because of the heat wave situation. So, I hope that the, the, the sports personnel gets involved in this kind of uh, exposure to hot environment. They should be careful about uh, different kinds of heat disorders. Then one is a behavioral kind of disorder which is called the heat fatigue, which is a transitory phenomena. Very, very transient for short term and during that time he may lose his uh, uh, sensory motor performance, his mental and vigilance task everything can be impaired. So, there will be substantial decrement in their performance, the discomfort, physical strain can physiological strain can substantially increase. So, the as I said that acclimatization and training in work in the heat is the only prevention available for uh, behavioral disorders. It can be chronic too, heat fatigue can be chronic uh, and that will hamper the uh, social behavior, inability to concentrate and there will be substantial reduction in the performance capacity of a person and uh, the, there can be psychosocial stress, there will be probable adrenal hormonal imbalance. So, medical treatment for serious cases is essential so that uh, the symptoms there can be relief from the symptoms. Most important is the custom of leaving the orientation of life in the hot regions. One historical picture I am showing here is a uh, heat exposed fatigue situation and then you can see the person is lying and then there is a uh, continuous uh, showering of water over the body surface in order to quickly cool down. It is a very, very old picture. So, what are the basic steps required in heat stress management? Let us highlight one or two points here. One is this wearing of the light clothing during physical activity, the type of clothing, color of the clothing, biophysical property of the clothing are important to recognize in order to choose the type of clothing that is required in case of different physical activity. Essentially, it is uh, attempted that uh, uh, heavy sports events are not to be performed in high heat. Means all this event should be completed uh, in the early morning and uh, or late in the afternoon. So, so high exposure period is avoided. A person coming from a other environmental zone, as I said in the beginning, in case of my acclimatization point discussion that the 1 to 2 week acclimatization is necessary, but those inhabitants are coming from a completely different environment lower environmental zones, they will require a little bit longer period of acclimatization and that requires to be monitored on a daily basis in order to see whether what is his level of acclimatization reaching, because so any kind of performance requires level of physiological stability in order to achieve uh, better performance. Fluid intake is uh, very, very uh, essential in order to maintain fluid balance and that is why there is an attempt that fluid supplement before the event is always being preferred because that uh, water gets uh, very smoothly distributed through the different body space and uh, once the event is over then again the fluid intake can take place. However, in case of long distance runner, there is a always a suggestion that uh, uh, no large quantity of water is taken. However, uh, 
a small sip of water can be can be advocated during uh, during running and uh, in order to cool the body that occasional pooling of cold cold water on head and body might also help in reducing the illness with these uh, few slides i have tried to explain you the how the hot environment also influences human performance there are various kinds of heat illnesses and disorders in case a person cannot be acclimatized or one reaches to his limit of thermoregulation then there is always a possibility that we use some method by which we can reduce the total load on the body one of the example that we described about supplementation of fluid in various forms so that fluid becomes a source in order to reduce the hydration or hypohydration sometimes we call it that we uh, we achieve a state of hyperhydration that we have already described earlier if it is not possible then you know there is always a possibility that there are kinds of heat stress and disorders take place and as we described so there are different methods of heat exposures and heat disorders which ultimately needs to be appropriately taken by considerations like what are the predisposing factors physiological disturbances and what are the treatment and prevention that is required so it is not a one issue there are a number of different response characteristics by which the human body can reach to a critical stage and as long as we can maintain those optimal conditions of exposure during different kinds of exercise performances we will be able to achieve a good amount of physiological status of the person thank you